Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Got another broken TV that I'm gonna see if I can repair and give it away. So it's a 55 inch TCL Roku TV. I have no feet. I've got a power cord, a remote. The complaint is there's no picture. Got it from a neighbor. He said that it works. It comes on, you can hear it clicking. He can hear the menus and everything and it plays a program, but you can't see anything. So that tells me it's probably the backlight control. Maybe we'll get lucky. It's an easy surface mount component, but probably a driver board, maybe a power board. So let's confirm it, plug it in and see what happens. So I just plugged it in. We can definitely see the backlight coming on. So it may not be quite an accurate description. It's just a faint glow. The camera is actually overexposing it. It's not nearly as bright as it looks, but you can see there's a faint blue glow there. Just shut off. I don't know if it's going through some kind of Buddha process or what. It might be erroring out and going through some kind of diagnostic, but you definitely can't see anything displayed. Sometimes you can see pixels, but I'm not getting anything visible out of this right now. So, all right, some problem confirmed. <laughs> Tells me it's probably the driver board. We have response, so it's probably not power. All right, let's open it up. So it looks like a heck of a lot of screws. We got, luckily, all of these marked here with a little screw toggle so you don't miss any. All kinds of those are on the center section. Let's go ahead and get those out. So with older TVs, you usually had to take the entire back panel off and smaller TVs are still like that. But with this one, all we have to do is take off this lower section here. There's nothing up here. And on the larger models, same thing. The actual TV control parts, once we get off this panel, you'll see are even tinier. We're gonna have a power board here, wherever your AC cable comes in, that's where your power board is going to be. Wherever your inputs are, that's where your main panel, your processor is going to be. That's handling all your menus and actually switching things and producing your audio and all that kind of good stuff. And then wherever your power button is, and that's right here, this is where your TCON board is going to be. And that's your timing control, or your driver board. That's what's responsible for actually generating the physical image to the LCD screen. And then behind everything, are LED strips, and it's exactly what you think they are. You're not gonna see them in this video because you have to take everything out to be able to change those or see them, but we have light, so it's not the problem here. Those are just like the Govi strips that you've seen everybody in the last 10 years putting in the room. The power supply board does exactly what you think. It's supplying voltage to the TCON board, to the LED strip lights, and over to the main board. Now we have power, that's probably not anything to do with the issue. We have a backlight glow, and that means that the strip lights are getting power and the strip lights are good. And that's a good thing because even though they are cheap, they're pain in the butt to reinstall because it's a lot of disassembly and a full reassembly. It's only about a $30 repair, but takes way longer than anything else. The main board is probably not the issue here because we have sound. It's responding. The menus are coming up. You just can't see them. So that's likely no big deal either. It could be a bad TCON board. Could be a failed component on it. It could also be something cheap, simple, and free. And that's what we're going to check out right now. A loose cable or a bad cable connection. We're simply going to undo the cables and put them back and then check and see. Now, one important thing. Whenever you plug the TV back in to do a test or see if something's working now, you have to then wait 30 minutes after you unplug it for all the power to dissipate from the capacitors before you go back in and touch anything else. So let's take this cover off. Should pop off if I got all the screws. A little hard with one hand. Make sure I'm not pulling up any cables, and there is one cable there, so I'm gonna put the phone down, disconnect that real quick. And here's the cable connecting the switches to the main power, or not the main power board, the main control board. I'm just gonna push down on that little tab and take the cable out. So there's the cable. This is where it went. It's simply a pinch connector, just like this one here. 
you just push down with your thumb and wiggle it and pull it straight back out. Now these ribbon cables are the ones that are likely to have bad connections if that's going to be the issue. This is our T-Con board right down here. Now, because we have the whole thing not responding, it's not likely to be one or either of these because they're not likely to fail both at the same time, unless this controller itself has failed. This is receiving signal from the main board. That could certainly be it. I'm gonna take a look at this real close after I put on my glasses. Over here, we just have power distribution. So those are gonna be fine, but we can use these power cables and disconnect things in certain orders to troubleshoot further once we get up close here. So what I'm gonna do right now is a visual inspection, make sure I don't see anything blown, and then I'm simply going to detach and reattach all the cables, fire it back up and see what happens. So I've done a careful visual inspection on all the boards. I don't see any evidence anywhere of damage or shorts, burned or broken traces. Everything looks, aside from some dust, pretty much brand new. A little crooked there on the cable, but nothing obviously obnoxious. Just doing this before I go any further. Just some dust and dirt, but we'll blow that off. All right. So because I'm not worried about the power supply, I'm gonna go ahead and start working and testing, and I'm not worried about uh, any kind of danger or damage because I'm not gonna be anywhere near capacitors over there, and I'm gonna be mainly con confined to the T-Con board for now. So I'm gonna unseat this, and to do that, you push in the two little tabs and wiggle it back. Just examining its pins. Just wanna make sure that none of them look scraped off or shorted. And we wanna see if we can tell that they've all been making normal contact. I don't see anything obvious here. If anything, it would be on this far side. There's a little bit of a difference on those last few pins, so maybe we'll get lucky. Can't really see anything on the socket side. Should be normal looking presses. And we'll do the same on this side here. Now on this, you just take this little flipper do, and the whole thing should easily slide out. Likewise, we'll check its contacts. That all looks good down here. Make sure no broken or bent pins. Everything looks good. So we'll just try reseating that and power it on. I don't think I'll need that other panel attached because I think that's just controlling the physical switches. With the power cord in, we do have backlight. So it's booting up. I won't hear anything because the speakers are in that other panel, but I'll give it a minute here to boot. You can see the backlight through the screw hole there and see if we get a picture after I tip it up. So still no picture, just a faint glow from the backlight. So the next step is to disconnect one of these ribbon cables coming from the controller board. That's gonna free up half of its resources just to see if we have any change. If we disconnect one of these and we get half of a picture, then we know that we have TCON damage on one of its controllers. If we have no change, then it's probably completely shot. Either way, we're probably gonna be just replacing this TCON board, but I wanna troubleshoot it to see. And just like the ribbon connector on the main board, we just take our fingernail or a spudger Flip this little guy up and slide the cable out. All right, now let's plug it back in and see if there's any difference. And look at that. We now have half of our screen responding. So the easiest, cheapest fix is going to be simply get a new TCON board because they're only like 25, 30 bucks. And then we'll just plop it back in. 
All right, got the old board out. It's just two screws. New part just came in. Two days, 15 bucks from Amazon. I'll put a link down below in case you need this particular one for this model. But even if you have a different model, just Google or put in the Amazon search the model number and the word TCON, T-C-O-N, and it'll pop up whatever part you need. New one screwed down. Now to put these back in, just make sure these little tabs are flipped in the up position. You just align the cable in there and flip it down. There we go, 15 bucks. I'll clean it up, get all the dust out, screw that back panel back on, and I'll have a like new TV. That's all it takes. Super easy. Really doesn't matter which part of TV needs. It's cheap. Power boards are usually the most expensive, sometimes the main board, but either way, you're talking 30 ish dollars and the Tcon, obviously, cheaper. There's just not that much to them. Even the light strips, if you need all new LED strips, about 30 bucks. It's all labor, you know, and, and it's not hard. You can YouTube and Google for pretty much any common TV out there. These kinds of issues are very common for any TV out there. So there you go. Hope it helps. See you next time.